The Apartment Gurus podcast is brought to you by Greenlight Equity Group, an apartment acquisitions and holdings firm co-founded by Carl York and Tate Seamer, host of this show. We offer you the opportunity to be an owner of cash-flowing, wealth-growing apartments without the headaches of being a landlord. These assets are recession-resistant, risk-mitigated, offer significant tax advantages, and are a great alternative to the stock market. Ready to check it out? Go to www.investwithgreenlight.com today to book a personal consultation with Carl or Tate. Again, that's investwithgreenlight.com. We look forward to meeting you. Welcome to The Apartment Gurus, where twice a week, host Tate Seymour brings you deep dive interviews with the wisest gurus in the apartment investing industry. These experts are sure to create game-changing value and inspiration designed to catapult your business to the next level. Be sure to reach out to Tate at www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. And now, here is Tate Seymour and the Apartment Gurus. Welcome everybody back. Another episode of the Apartment Gurus podcast is coming at you right now. And I'm particularly excited about this episode today because the guru that's uh, that's joining us is joining us from my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, where I grew up and I essentially was born and raised there. I was I, I was actually born in California and lived there for a very short time, but I Grew up in Cincinnati. It's my my home turf. I went to college in Athens, and and we invest in Columbus, Ohio. So this is this is a you know a close to home episode for me. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Lee Yoder on the show, and uh, Lee. First of all, before I introduce you, I just want to say welcome. I'm really excited to have you, and and uh, it's fun to talk to another Ohio guy. Yeah, that's right. Tate, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always good to talk to another Ohio guy, a fellow Bearcat and a fellow yep. Buckeye too. I'm really, I went to UC, but I, I was a Buckeye fan from very young. So I, I really yep. couldn't totally get into UC because I'm just too big of a Buckeye fan. So, okay. I just got to ask you when UC made, it was just last year that UC made that incredible run, wasn't it? Or yeah. was it the year before? Okay. So yeah, did, did you get excited about that? Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. Okay. For me. You know, Ohio, you know, Ohio State wasn't in the playoffs, so yeah, all in on UC, um, it, pulling for them. But um, just if if they would have come up against Ohio State, I'd, I'd be cheering for Ohio State. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, right. it's my second second favorite team for sure. Cool, cool. Okay, great. UC for the listeners that may not know, that's the University of Cincinnati, home of the Fighting Bearcats, uh, who had an amazing football season uh, last year. But that's yeah. not what we're here to talk about. So. <laughs> um, so Lee's story is really interesting and and I'm I'm really excited to to hear it from you Lee but in the way of an intro um I'll just share with the listeners that that Lee, Lee was actually a practicing therapist uh physical therapist rather uh and you did PT school at UC is that correct? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh and then he realized uh in the course of of doing that work that his true passion was building his own business and investing in real estate. Um, and so what he did was he he quickly built a portfolio with uh, several small apartment communities, apartment buildings, and then quickly repositioned that portfolio uh, and then brought it full cycle. So repositioning means he improved the properties, he stabilized them, he raised rents, he got everything up to market specs, and then bringing it full cycle means that he sold the property um, and was able to provide an incredible return to his investors. And then, so now today, Lee's taken that progression. He's focused on uh, syndicating larger apartment buildings. His company's called Threefold Real Estate Investing. And he's he's just really committed to uh, providing great opportunity for wealth building and uh and for his investors and and everybody involved also has a podcast that you guys should all check out called the threefold real estate investing. That's called, is it the threefold real estate investing podcast? Yes, that's right. Jay. Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So kind of like this show, it's a focus on multi family real estate investing. So, so Lee, once again, welcome, really excited to have you. 
Um, I love your, I love a couple of your goals uh, that you've set for yourself. Um, doubling your investors money in five years. That's, that's definitely exciting. And, yeah. and also remarkably doable in this space. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in fact, if a deal doesn't underwrite to that uh, metric, it's, um, you know, it, it may or may not be a, a, a great deal. Usually right. in a five year period, you can get that done. But so that's awesome. 5,000 units in five years, dude, that's stout. That's really, that's like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. That's yeah. a stretch goal. Well, I like, I, yeah. I like it. And we could have a conversation about how you've gone about setting your goals even um, cause I'm always fascinated by that process, but you know, 5,000 a year, like, you know, that's, that's doable. It's a stretch, but especially when you're kind of starting, you know, and you're in the, starting in the growth part of your curve, like you are, um, and starting that curves starting to get steeper and steeper. Right. Um, right. Yeah, but, yeah. uh, yeah. I, that's super exciting. Um, you know, 5,000 unit portfolio is that puts you right up there with the, with the really big boys. Um, so, so yeah, man, um, Lee, I'd love to hear a little bit more about you and your story and, um, specifically your real estate story kind of, what was the inspiration uh, when you were in PT school that got you going? And, um, you know, what have been some of the important things along the way? Yeah, sure. Um, so, to, yeah, I went to UC uh, for PT school. Uh, I started out pre-med and just ended up not wanting to go to school quite that long. So uh, be became a PT instead and, and decided to stay in healthcare. I, I, I like working around people and, and stuff. I, it was never like a big passion for me. I wasn't, you know, ever like all in on being a physical therapist, but I'm a sports guy and, and again, like working with people and, and just felt like it was a good job. And so got out uh, in 2012 and, and it was a good job. I mean, I worked in an outpatient clinic, enjoyed it. Um, again, you know, not, not a big passion, uh, but, but did enjoy it working with athletes and stuff like that. And, and, and just guys like you and I uh, coming in after work, but didn't love the hours. So I ended up trying out home health, physical therapy, and really liked that because I had like complete flexibility pretty easy and actually made better money. So it seemed like, why wouldn't I go do this? Um, yeah. you know, basically my, you know, with technology today, like my, my patients just come to my phone and then I go see them. Like I call them and, and set up with them and I can go see them whenever I, you know, whenever it works for me and for them. So to get a day off was, was nothing. Now I, I can't take the whole week off cause I got to see a certain amount of people that week, but to move, move them around from one day to another, my company doesn't really care. They just, you know, the patients have to get seen. And as long as yeah. it's good with the patients, it's good with them. So lots of flexibility. So great for the family. My wife loved this job for me. Um, cause I had so much flexibility and like very little stress. Uh, problem is Tate, like, I'm just not wired like that. So I was very bored, um, because you know, there's no stress. It's also like not challenging or exciting or fulfilling for me. So yeah, yeah. after a year of that, I was like, I can't keep doing this. Well, the company I was on with, I, I didn't really know it that much at the time. I probably should have, but they were actually a staffing company here in Cincinnati. Um, and they were a, a startup company. So they actually asked me to come in as a clinical director, but pretty quickly I started working into a role of more like a, a director of operations. I was doing sales, just doing a bunch of different things and I was doing no therapy anymore. And mm. so this was my first clue that I like doing business stuff. Like I, what I was doing for them is mm. running numbers and I was managing some people. I quickly realized I didn't like doing that. But what I loved doing was feeling like I was building this division within a startup company, mm -hmm. me and another guy. And, um, you know, forecasting and going out. I like doing sales and I like being out there and, and just trying to grow that. I just really like that and did not miss physical therapy at all. Um, so now, you know, fast forward like a year and, and I'm, I'm in this job and, and really enjoying the job. It's exciting. It's challenging. It's fulfilling. Now I have like no flexibility. So yeah. now I'm in the office. So I feel like I'm kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum. So now, you know, wife and family, it's like, this is not a great job for that. Um, whereas, you know, the home health physical therapy was so, started to feel like, all right, well, is this the right route? Because yeah, well, I, I really enjoy it and it's challenging work. Um, doesn't seem like it's great for my family. Also, you know, as it can be kind of in the corporate space, like felt like the goalposts kind of kept getting moved as well. Like, oh, you're going to be here. And then uh, not quite, actually, it's going to be a couple more years. So this is the moment Tate, where I started just kind of looking around like, all right, I don't want to go back and just do home health, physical therapy. Yes, that's great for the family, but I'm, I, God did not create me to do something like that. I'm just going to get bored very quickly. Can't be that. Also, I don't know that I want to keep climbing the corporate ladder because while it's challenging, fulfilling work, I don't have the flexibility that I want, you know, for my family. And mm -hmm. and, and I'm just not, it's just not long-term for me. So started looking around, you know, someone handed me a book. I ended up reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. 
And that light bulb moment that a lot of people have, I felt like, okay, there is another way. It's not just these two choices. It's not climb the corporate ladder and sell your soul to a company. And maybe it's not great for your family and, and, and your faith, if that's important to you, or go do like kind of an easy job. It's great for the family, but not going to be challenging filling. It felt like with real estate, maybe I could have both and not just with real estate tape, but like just entrepreneurship. It felt like yeah. maybe yeah. I can go do something on my own and yeah. work really hard, but maybe I'll have a little bit more control of like when I'm working because when I was climbing the corporate ladder, I, I started getting up at four or four 30 in the morning to try to get work done in the morning. Cause I felt like I can work in the morning when my kids and my wife aren't up. So I'm working really hard, but I'm not missing time with the family. Well, that helped, but it didn't make my company say, well, okay, then you can come into the office less time. Cause you're putting time in, in the morning. Right. That didn't happen. But I feel like as an entrepreneur, you can do that kind of thing. Like sure. it does, if you want to get up and work in the morning, that counts. Like you, you can maybe not work as much during the day or something like that. So that right. was my idea. Tate. So I, I left that corporate job at the end of 2016. I took a pretty big pay cut and I actually went back to home health, physical therapy, but with the goal and the idea of doing real estate as a side hustle, it, it took me almost a year to get my first deal. Uh, and I bought a single family flip kind of in the fall of 2017. And, and that's what kind of got my real estate journey going. And I was doing home health, physical therapy at the time. And and kind of jumped into real estate as a side hustle. Wow. Okay. Lee, that's an amazing story. It's, it's really cool. Um, just before I, I highlight a few things, take us from that first single family to your uh, initial portfolio that you repositioned. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, yep. kind of take us through that progression as well, if you would. Yeah. So um, yeah, push, push our way into that flip, bought a house at I would, one of those Tate, like a lot of guys say, I would never do my first deal again, but I'm glad I did. Like that's exactly right. what this one was. I would never do this again. Right. Um, just terrible house, leaking basement, needed a ton of work, uh, but it was in my hometown. I bought it on an online auction, overpaid for it. Uh, but you know, market's been good for a long time. So, you know, we did well on it, Tate. I put a ton of time in on my own. So I feel like God kind of gave me this perfect picture of flipping is not investing because right. I, I, as I mentioned, I left the corporate job took about a 30% pay cut, go back and I'm, I'm doing physical therapy. So much less busy, you know, much better. But then I add a flip on top of that. I put a ton of time in myself. So now I'm really working just about as much as I was at the corporate job, maybe a little more flexibility of doing it when I want, but putting in just many hours. And I literally made back the same amount of money that I lost leaving that corporate job. So it was just this picture of like, I'm just doing different jobs and making money. And then you go and sell the flip and you own no real estate. So yeah, I was like, I, I just changed jobs. I was doing a one busy corporate job and now I'm doing a physical therapy job with a flip on top of it. And I made the same amount of money. And, and on top of that, you introduced some risk into your space. Yeah. That, oh yeah. That Absolutely. you wouldn't have had, if you just kept the corporate job, made the same amount of money, you, yep. you wouldn't have had the risk of buying a speculative deal. And that's what house, yep. Right. That's what house flipping yeah. is really. I could have lost my, yeah. the, the one thing I will say, Tate though, and, and the reason I'm glad I did it is just, it did get me into real estate. Sure. I did start meeting contractors that I end up using on the next one. So, Hey, you know, I, I don't suggest people don't, I mean, know what flipping is, know that it's not investing, know that it is speculative, all, all that stuff and, and know what you're getting into, but it's not a bad way to get started. I mean, right. I, I just think people should get started. So almost right. whatever you get started with, you know, if you right. have mentor, maybe some coaching, but so after that, Tate, so that was, 2017, the next year, 2018. Uh, oh, and also after that, my wife said, Hey, this isn't what you told me investing was going to be like at all. You said like passive income. You said, you know, residual income. And I said, yeah, you, you know, you're right. So we're, you know, we're not going to do another flip. So it's good to have a partner like that, uh, that, that, that calls you out and says, Hey, you know, you said the goal was to have, you know, rentals. We, you know, we just did this and you made some money, right. tons of right. time, all that. So we got a duplex next, you know, small multifamily you can do. Um, Bought that at an auction as well. That was basically a flip. We had to, you know, kind of gutted both sides and turn that. But, and we ended up selling that in under a year, Tate. But mm. for a few months, we had it rented and we played landlord and we had some, some tenants. And so it's just a proof of concept thing. Sure. For a few months, the income from the rent, uh, from, the, from the people living there was more than all our expenses, including our mortgage. So we're making money every month. We're mm -hmm. paying down a mortgage. Our, our, our residents are paying down the mortgage, right? So it's just this, man, you know, this is what it's all about. We're making a little bit. And, you know, then you start doing some calculations tape where you're like, all right, I'm making, I don't know what it was, three, 300 bucks a month or something. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, $3,600 a year. Um, all right. You know, um, if we did 10 of these, we're at 36,000. We do 20, we're at 72,000. Okay. Now we're starting to talk about some, you know, 
maybe that, that's probably, you know, here in the Midwest, right. that's probably enough to pay our bills. I mean, it's nothing to get like super excited about, but 72,000 probably gets all our bills paid. Um, but I don't want to do 20 duplexes. So, all right, well, let, let's take the next step. And meanwhile, I'm always, you know, I'm listening to podcasts like yours, Tate, where, you know, listen to people come on and, and so many of them say like, I, I would have gone bigger, faster. I, I'd go yeah. bigger, like go bigger. Yeah. There's, you know, economies of scale, so many different things. So that was the progression I wanted to do. So the, um, I joined the local RIA in Cincinnati. I always like to say it because that is really what helped launch me. And whether you have a good RIA or whether you join a coaching program, what I started there, Tate, was they had an apartment focus group. And the guy running that group taught me how to underwrite. And he oh, wow. really helped give me confidence and, and kind of became my first coach. Um, and he helped me get a 16 unit. So I started okay. looking on LoopNet. This is 2018. Um, started looking on LoopNet, underwriting tons and tons of deals, calling brokers, um, you know, gaining more confidence than I saw one again, local, all, all my early deals, well, everything I've done has been local um, and found a 16 unit that um, it'd been on the market for a long time, made a really low offer and ended up getting that. I gave my, that kind of coach, the guy running the uh, apartment focus group, you know, who I'd paid no money to, uh, but I gave him a piece in that deal uh, nice. just so he would kind of come on with me and keep coaching me and help me and come out for the inspection. And brilliant, you know, brilliant idea. Right? Man. Yeah. Just make sure I didn't make these big mistakes and brilliant um, idea. Yeah. Thank you. I, I agree. It, it really I, I've, well. we did the same thing and, and I, you don't hear people do this very often, but uh, we brought on a partner into a 20 unit deal when we were first getting started Nice, strictly yeah. to be an advisor to us yeah. and, uh, and gave him a chunk of the deal, you know, and, it, and he was super happy and we were in such a better position because of it. So that is, a, that's a, golden takeaway right there uh listeners is you know file that one away it, you know in your nugget so to speak and and uh remember that the advantages of of in the, that relationship that you build man in that scenario oh, is yeah so key and so strong so, yeah and what's cool nice. about it tate is you know i gave him 10 percent of the deal uh like we mentioned and we'll, we'll get more into it we went full cycle on that and I ended up making him twenty thousand dollars, and That's I awesome. was so happy to do that. And it's funny, Tate, because I really looked like about a year later or something. I was looking at some of the coaching programs. Maybe it was two years later. I was like, maybe I should join one of those. They've got good networks and stuff. And the upfront cost was twenty grand. Mm -hmm. And it's like, again, maybe that's a good investment for you. But it was just made me kind of think and, and laugh. Like, I got to pay twenty grand before I get anything from them. Yeah. You know, I liked my coach. I was like, hey, I'm gonna give you nothing. I mean. Yeah. Maybe, but I gave him 20 grand once I made a bunch of money, you know, with this right. help. So right. yeah, I, I think it's a great way to do it as well. The, the flip side of that uh, conversation, I totally agree with you and, and, and am aligned with you on, on it. The flip side is that it's, it's not necessarily usual for somebody to take as much interest for in sure. somebody as that guy did in you. Yep. Right. Yep. I mean, he really took you under his wing. He taught you to underwrite. He obviously saw something in you that he liked and wanted to support and help and that you can't just go out and find that. And you can That's go right. out and find a paid coach or a paid mentorship yep. or yep. a paid mastermind or whatever that looks like. I just, uh, I'm starting, I'm kicking off a uh, coaching program myself here in the, in the, you know, strictly larger scale multifamily oh, space. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I mean, there's, if you're lucky enough to get a, an organic natural um, mentorship relationship going with somebody that can really move the needle for you by gosh, like do what Lee did and hook him up or her up with, when you make money based on their efforts and their, you know, their, their knowledge and resources, like that's, that's an amazing way to go. Yeah. Well, you're exactly right. Tate. And uh, I'll say this, that guy, he had paid for coaching. So, yeah. I, you know, I was lucky to have him and, and I felt like, man, I'm, I'm just getting the coaching through him, but yeah, sure. that's not common. And then as I mentioned, Tate, a year or two later, I'm still looking at getting coaching because I still need coaching. And that guy, like he was too busy, you know, at that, I caught right. him at the, at the right time and, and he had some, and he still really didn't give me that much time, but I was still happy to give him the 10%, totally worth it. He got me into multifamily, but I wasn't interested in partnering with him again because he just didn't have time for me. He had his own thing going yeah. But again, yeah, if you pay for coaching, they got to give you the time. They're, they're making time. You're paying, you're paying oh, for yeah. your time. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm still all in. I, I think everybody needs coaching or mentorship. And yeah, if you can go find a guy at Urea like I did, but you're right. It's, it's pretty uncommon. Um, 
So yeah, I'm a, I'm a proponent of any kind of coaching, you yeah. know, get referrals, make sure you're getting in a good one. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. You gotta yeah. have somebody, if you want to get in a multifamily, you gotta have somebody holding your hand to get started. I think. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it, it's an, ins- it's almost like an insurance policy really when you're yeah right. If you're right. talking 15, 20, 25 grand, whatever the, the cost of, uh, you know, usually it's a year program. Right. Um, right. you know, that that's a fraction of even the acquisition fee you're going to get on a larger scale property. Yep. Um, so, exactly. you know, like it's, it's really, that's kind of a good way of looking at it too, is, is if you feel like, this person you're talking to this coach or this mentor uh, perspective coach or mentor can get you that to that first deal. That's going to, you know, be a larger scale, uh, you know, high unit count type deal. That's going to have hopefully a six figure acquisition fee. Like, you know, that's worth, it's worth strongly, strongly considering hiring that person because uh, you know, the, the ROI is huge. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Get yeah. Started. Right on. So, so, okay. So I, just to go back, you know, <laughs> and unpack a couple things, rich dad, poor dad, dude, I see, I see the book behind your, behind your head yeah. there. If, if oh, those of you, those yeah. of you watching on YouTube, you can see the purple book back, the purple and black book back there. Um, I can't tell you how many podcasts this book has come up on by far in a way Oh yeah. The the most mentioned book on this podcast and and in this space. And it's so seminal, it's so foundational. And it really is the book that creates the vision for so many real estate entrepreneurs. Uh, because you learn that acquiring cash flowing assets is really the ultimate goal, right? Like that's yep that's really what you're after. And, uh, and you know, that that's back in the day. I mean, I read the, I read rich dad, poor dad probably 20 years ago and the back in the day, entrepreneurship wasn't necessarily super sexy. There wasn't a whole lot of, uh, this sort of thinking out there really. Um, and you know, it was very revolutionary back in the day, but it's amazing to me even now how, how foundational that book is. So listeners, like you gotta, you gotta read this book if you haven't yet yes. and, and, yep. you know, get it on audio book, get it on, get it in hardcover or, or paperback and read it. Um, because it will change your foundation for what you're doing. And I guarantee it's going to make you think bigger. Yep. Oh, I agree, man. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So I, I, I love that that was a part of your progression, but it seems like, you know, going back to the home health venture, that that was kind of your first taste of what it was like to kind of work for yourself, where yeah, where bit. you yeah. uh, you controlled your schedule to a certain degree, you controlled your workload, kind of, um, and that then then you got excited about the business. You know, you got into the business side of things, and uh, and and doing all those activities, and it's almost like you kind of found your superpower uh, through that yeah, a little bit venture. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you translated the physical therapy world to the business world, because, you know, you could have easily just compartmentalized PT and been like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's my W2 and, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to go over here and do something else on the side kind of thing. But you actually, uh, learn, you, you grew inside of it. You, you, uh, you caught vision inside of the, of, of the, both the home health thing and then the more corporate thing you did and, uh, and, and decided to level up. Um, but you, and then you went back to home health, which I think is really cool, uh, because that kind of gave you the space to, to get busy in real estate. So for sure. Yeah. Um, so good on you. See, you, so you point to rich dad, poor dad as being the real estate in, inspiration mainly. Yeah. 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 Real estate and, and entrepreneurship. Um, yep. just, it felt like when I read that Tate, it was like, wow, there, there's a bunch of guys and girls that are playing a completely different game. That, yeah. That's what I walked away. I was like, it, there's just a whole different game out there that I, that no one's ever told me about. I mean, it's yeah. only people say that like, well, how did I not know about this? And, and I, and yeah. I still think that, and that's why, you know, I, I think guys like, 
you and I want to do a podcast. Like I want more people to know right. about this. I mean, you just said it really simply there. Tate. That's it. Like owning cash flowing assets. Like everybody should do that. Right. Everybody should try to do. It. I think everybody should invest in real estate. You don't have to be active, right? right? You should do it passively. But um, right. or in or, or is it something else? I mean, maybe maybe you've got a business, but like you should own cash flow, cash flowing assets. And yeah, it just seemed like when I read that book, I was like, wow, there's a there's a whole different game. And I want to spend a you know the rest of my life maybe, but at least definitely the next yeah. years, like learning about this game and learning how to play it. And that's, that's what it felt like. And then real estate really spoke to me too. Tate, like my dad's in construction, always has been, I did residential construction in between, you know, going to college, you know, during the summer and stuff like that. So real estate spoke to me that way. Um, so it was like, all right, I think I want to go do my own thing, be an entrepreneur, um, buy assets and, and, and I want to do it in real estate. Yeah. You know, it occurred to me while you were talking about, especially about not knowing the game that other people were out there playing. Yeah, dude, we're both from Ohio and, uh, you know, let's face it, you know, I, I'm sure you've been to a lot of other places other than Ohio and Ohio is not the most progressive place in the world, you know, as far right. as, as far as, uh, kind of, you know, thought leadership entrepreneurialship in general and especially i'm a little older than you i i can guarantee you by a lot actually um it just you just i can just tell by your by by your look and your hairline dude you're i'm jealous <laughs> anyway um but uh but you know um uh, i was I, and i went to great schools in in ohio but i was re i really feel that i was raised and trained to be an employee mm -hmm. you know yeah and yeah, a very well-educated employee that could make a, a nice big salary and all that. But like, I thought when I, I, I went to college, I got a degree in psychology. I didn't know what the heck to do with that. And I really thought that the first three years of my adult life, I was like, man, I got to climb the corporate ladder. That doesn't sound fun to me at all, but I didn't, I mean, the word, the word entrepreneur was, right. I had heard it once or twice, uh, but you know, I, I didn't, I had never, I hadn't connected with the part of me that's really wired as an entrepreneur, which you clearly are. And you clearly recognize that, uh, you know, during your, during your, um, your business ventures in physical therapy, but you know, and it, this just, I, I know I'm saying a lot here and I'll let you, I'll let you give me some feedback. No, but, go ahead. Um, it really illustrates the difference, you know, the basic difference between an employee mentality and an ownership mentality. Mm -hmm. And I'm always really careful when this subject comes up to point out that there's nothing wrong or right really about either one of those two things. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad or a good judgment or label or anything else. Um, but people are just wired differently. And, you know, this yeah. world needs great employees that, are happy doing what they're doing and productive and make an impact. Right. But yeah, the world also needs great owners and, and, and great operators. And, um, and you know, once you recognize that that's the way you're wired to me, like I've never even thought about going back. I don't know about you, but like, yeah, no, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that steady progression, like right out of being an employee and, becoming an owner of something like yep. a landscaping company or whatever it is. Like, you know, you got to do you know, something. You, you make, you make a good point. Tate. And, I, and I like that you brought up, you know, when I mentioned the flip, it was just a different job and you're like, well, and with more risk and that's absolutely right. I mean, any, any entrepreneur endeavor th there's risk. And that's why, that's why typically entrepreneurs and, and, and owners, like yeah. they get paid last and the, they have the chance to make the most right? because they're taking on all the risk. Um, and, and to your point, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. My wife is, she read, I finally had her read rich dad, poor dad, like two years ago. And mm -hmm. she got done. She goes, I identify with the poor dad. I like that path. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you're wrong. That's, that's, you, you read it wrong. Like read it again. <laughs> read read like, it again. Down, exactly what you said. Tate. Like she's just wired differently. She's like, no, yeah. I, I, I get it. I just, I don't want to take the risk and I'm fine with lower reward. Like, you know, again, with, with the, the money I was making as a physical therapy first, she's like, that's enough. That's, that's plenty. Gives mm -hmm. us the life we want. You know, we'll be able to save. And, and it's true, Tate. I don't, I don't argue with that. We, I was making enough. We could have had a, a great life. It just, 
again, I'm not wired like that. So eventually I, you know, just feel like I was going to have to get in and do something entrepreneurial because that's just how I'm wired. Um, I, yeah. I always want to be building and, and doing more. And like with home health, it was like just the same thing every day. I mean, there's really no way to do anything different or go up. I mean, I could have went and been in the office, but I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted to go mm. do something and build something. So yeah, nothing wrong with the, the W2 side. Um, yep. You can take the poor dad route that, it, you know, it, obviously in that book, it's kind of more derogatory right, um, right. way to say it, but it, yeah. it's not, you don't have to be poor and you can live a great life. Um, yeah. But yeah, some people read that book and it's like, oh my gosh, I, I've got to go the other route. And that, that was me yeah. and, and you obviously. Yeah. And, and, you know, so many other people in our realm and in yeah. and, and the real estate realm and, and other realms, it's, it, it's it's a remarkable force of of intellectual property, if you will. Yes. Oh, um, for sure. I'm curious, uh, not to get personal or 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 oh, go in, ahead. into marital stuff, but you know, has that been at all challenging for you guys to navigate with um, kind of the different orientations, or is it more complementary? Yes. Uh, it's been it was it's been very challenging, um, and it, but it's turned into something complementary, and um, I believe that's you know why often. God, you know, has, has it so that, you know, opposites attract and, um, yeah. you know, he, he wants to, in my opinion, kind of like mold us and, 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 and refine us. And my wife does that for me. And I think I do that for her. And, and so, yeah, it, it was tough. I mean, I, I pretty much drug her into the first flip, uh, kind of kicking and screaming, yeah. um, and, and, you know, was not happy. And we had young kids. That's that thing too, Tate. It's like kind of a timing thing. You know, my son was two. And so he was a horrible age to bring out onto a flip. Um, you know, he came out one time and, um, it was like banging. We heard banging in the other room and I went over there and he had fallen. He was banging on a paint can with a hammer. So he dented in the lint of the paint can tripped over a ladder and fell oh, and the hook of the hammer, like hit right beside his head oh my you know, gosh. as I'm coming in. So take the hammer from him, bring him back out where he's eating his lunch. He drops his cheeseburger in a bucket of, um, drywall mud with, with water in it. So sandwich is gone. And then he grabbed an outlet and shocked himself. So, Oh my <laughs> gosh. I was like, I'm out of here. You know, I'm out of here. So it's, wow. it's stage of life too. And, and often, you know, a lot of times, I mean, not to be, you know, uh, gender roles can be whatever they want, but for my wife, she stayed home. And, and so like, it was a different time for her yeah, being sure. home with kids all the time. So that was part of it, but yeah, she's wired differently and, and doesn't want to do it. So, um, that, you know, doesn't feel led to take the risk. It's like, no, let's not do that. Why would we, why would we willingly add stress to our lives? It's kind of how, how she would explain it. Like, why would yeah. we do that? Yeah. Um, but for me, it's like, like I said, like that, that to me feels like excitement. Like that mm. energizes it's me. It's a if challenge, stress, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a chance. Yeah. To me, it's a challenge. Um, yeah. So yeah, totally different. But what, what's been cool Tate? what I would say is the whole time I've felt like we're not moving fast enough. I, I, I want to move faster. Why aren't we doing more deals? I mean, you know, as soon as I got the flip and we get that going, it's like, why aren't we adding another flip? Why aren't we doing another one? As soon as we get done, like, let's do another one. But my wife is more like, let's pump the brakes and let's talk about this again. Like I said, she was the one that said, this isn't investing. This isn't, you know, this isn't passive income at all. And so right. it was her that caused us to go right from one flip to a duplex. And I know a bunch of guys, you know, a bunch of them are, are some of the top guys in our, our field tape that they did a few dozen flips before they realized flipping's not investing. And I, I think I would have been there if not for my wife. Oh yeah. You know, just kind of pumping the brakes. So we, yeah. we do one flip and then we jump into a duplex. And then mm -hmm. from the duplex, we go to a 16 unit, you know, that yeah. is another pretty big jump. But again, kind of her like, let's wait, let's, you know, what are you, what are you trying to do here? Like, the, you know, and so um, I would say, I've always felt like we're not moving fast enough. She's always felt like I'm, you know, blazing ahead, dragging her behind. So we've taken a lot less steps than I've wanted to, but they've been big steps, you know, um, and, and that's, yeah. that's because of the way we've, we've worked together. So, yeah, you know, I, as Christ followers, we're, I'm trying to serve her. She's trying to serve me. I'm trying to, you know, serve her as, Hey, she doesn't want to be risk averse. She wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for me. So I need to honor her in that. And she's the same way. God made him to go do this. I don't want to, you know, get in his way. I don't want to force him to do a job for his entire career that he's, you know, unfulfilled by. So I need to honor him in that. Um, so kind of working together, but yeah, it's been really neat how it's actually worked out very well that we've done few deals in my mind, but we've actually moved, you know, farther. I mean, we've exceeded my expectations, Tate, um, even though I felt mm -hmm. like we're not moving fast enough. And I think part of that's because, you know, we've taken the bigger steps because we've done less deals and we've been calculated about it. Um, yeah. And that's a lot of thanks to my wife. 
that's really uh that's it's a fascinating outcome uh yeah. given the dynamics of your personalities and in your relationship and and to be able to look back and say you know what this actually turned out really well it, like better than i expected uh you know yeah. based on the dynamics of of my wife and my partner yeah. and and uh you know that's that's really cool and i congratulate yeah, yeah. you guys on on navigating through that and, yeah thank you yeah i mean it it on the surface sounds pretty challenging but you know i yes. think you got to be i think you got to be um just very number one very highly conscious as a person to to you know hold the space for somebody else that's in a in a different mindset than you. And, and, yes. and you also got to be empathetic and compassionate. Um, but you also got to speak your truth too, right? Like, yeah, y you know, th that's, we all got to be true to ourselves and your wife was true to herself when she said, Hey, I think I'm, you know, more along the lines of poor dad here. And, <laughs> yeah. and like there's, and again, just to emphasize, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, most of the listeners or if not all the listeners are going to be in the rich dad camp here. Um, and more relating to, to, to you, Lee and, and myself. So, uh, but I, I, I do love the powerful aspect of the powerful nature of your trajectory going, doing one single family, not doing 10 and yeah. get, getting through, you know, doubling your unit count in the next project. And then going from that to eight X in your unit count in the next project. Um, so so bring us up to date, like, uh, you know, you, you have 200 and roughly 40 doors, I believe something at this point, 283, 283. Mm -hmm. Good job. And, uh, and so what, what kind of assets are those, uh, primarily what, what size and, and asset class and that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we start out with small multifamilies, Tate, as I mentioned, the 16 unit. And then that same year, this was, uh, 2019, uh, at the end of 2019, we got a 16 and eight and a 10. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, my bio, we took those full cycle and sold all of those. Mm -hmm. And that actually is what allowed me to quit PT at the end of 2020 and go full time. Okay. And so in 2021, we started, we leveled up, you know, kind of going after a little bit bigger and, and syndicating because those smaller ones, the 16, eight and 10 that we got, uh, we just did joint ventures on those. So yeah. one or two partners uh, with me, I would keep half the deal, give them half the deal. They pretty much brought all the money. I did all the work, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, you know, the simple JV. So, and those were great. That's a great way to get started. It's a great way to build a portfolio. If you just want to stay small and stay local, yep. it's a great way to go. Um, but I want to go bigger. I'm going to build a business. I'm going to, you know, get, get bigger, um, assets. So in 2021, when we got going, um, with, with syndicating, we got a 45 unit and then we got a 47 unit and then a 96 unit. And then this year so far, we've just done one ninety five unit. Nice. That's our portfolio is those four. Nice. Nice. And, and those are, are, are those in, in and around Cincinnati or yeah. North Cincinnati? The first three, the ones that we did in 2021 actually are all in Dayton. And then this Dayton. 95 unit yep. we got this year is our first one in Cincinnati. Got it. Got it. Very, very cool. I, I, I just love that you're on my home turf, man. I think that's <laughs> it's so fun. Um, yep. you know, I get back there a lot because we, you know, we have four communities in Columbus and, Right. And, uh, so I often will fly into Cincinnati and drive up okay. to Columbus and, uh, cause I can fly direct from Salt Lake and it just nice. it works real well, uh, that way. Yeah. And, the one we just got is out on the East. You said you were e East side guy. Yeah, um, it's out yeah. in Williamsburg, just East of yep. the Tavis, the 95 That's way East on in Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, yes. and you know, one difference, uh, between Lee's model and, and our model at Greenlight is, Lee's investing in his backyard. And look, if you're in a market that makes a lot of sense to do that inside of on uh, an overall metrics level, your population growth, your, your rent growth, your, um, your, you know, your, your cap rates, your, all that's right. so your affordability measures, like by all means, you've got a massive home field advantage, sure. uh, by investing in your backyard. We're based in Utah at Greenlight and we invest in Ohio and Oklahoma. And that's because our market is not conducive to uh to producing cash flowing assets, which is what we're all about. Uh yeah. the you know the the property value in Utah has just gotten too high. And so we can't purchase properties at a level 
that the income from the property is going to pay the debt service and the expenses and our investors. Like there's just not enough cash flow there. So we, uh, you know, three, four years ago now, we went out and, and took on five markets and whittled them down to two. And, and, uh, you know, we're huge believers in those markets. We love them, love them, love them. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and so that, that's the other kind of takeaway, uh, for listeners is if you are considering investing out of state, number one, you want to pick your market very strategically based on economic metrics and, and job, uh, you know, the job economy and, and, uh, you know, the job environment. Uh, but you also want to invest in places that you like, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like you want to be able to, you want to, you want to be able to look forward to going there. And, and I just love Columbus. Uh, It's such a vibrant city these days. And, um, in a way that even Cincinnati isn't, but Cincinnati's pretty exciting too right now. Um, but Columbus is just kind of a powerhouse and it's, you know, cultural and recreational and it's just, you know, people love living there and it's growing all the time. So, um, so, you know, a little side sidebar on uh, market selection and, but, you know, option number one, a is always going to be look first, either where you are right now, where you live, uh, it does that make sense to invest there? And if not, is there another market that, you know, maybe you went to college somewhere, uh, that is a good market. You know, maybe you have family that lives in a good market. Um, having, having some ties, having some, some familiarity is always very helpful. So, but we didn't have familiarity in Oklahoma city when we cracked that nut open. So, um, you know, it, it can be done either way. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight, uh, be, before we let it get away on, in the episode is the importance of your RIA community. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, for listeners, if you don't know, RIA stands for it's R E I a real estate investor association. Most cities uh, of any size have local RIA chapters. Uh, Salt Lake city has two actually. Um, and then there's other Utah based RIAs. Um, but man, my RIA has been absolutely massive in, in our growth and in, in mm. our progression. And in fact, it was a RIA meeting where a speaker came, who's now one of my best friends. He came in, in from Colorado and spoke about how to get involved, how, how, basically how to do, how to get into multifamily yourself. Uh, five different ways to get into multifamily was essentially the, the, the mm. talk. And it was the first time I ever... Th- like we had done a 12 unit, but dude, I didn't believe I could do 150 units at that point. Yeah. And, and that, that one single talk shifted everything for me and really kind of, I, I look at it as a launch point uh, at my RIA event. And, but, and I could go through a number of other examples of key uh, partners and, and uh, contacts that we've made through RIA Um actually our sponsor, I know through our RIA event or through our RIA group. So, um, those are those meetup groups and those networking groups, listeners, like they're absolutely invaluable. Like you just can't overstate how massive an impact they can have on your business and your career. Um, and you know, in Lee's case, he got, that's where he found his kind of his coach, his mentor and, yeah somebody that gave him in, in your words, Lee, he gave you confidence uh, to go out and start doing this business, which that's everything, man. That confidence, that mindset oh, is sure. everything. Yeah. 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 That's we found stuff. a lot of investors there too, Tate. Um, nice. A lot of our investors. Yeah. So I, I, I second that, man. I mean, why not? It's, it's, I mean, ours, I don't know, 275 bucks a year or something. I mean, it, it's, oh, it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And if, it, you know, if, if you're not willing to pony up 275 bucks to invest in that level of, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of that your network is your net worth. And uh, if, you know, that $275 investment just expanded your network by a ton. And, you know, I always say when I'm in a RIA event, 
if I'm speaking or something, I'll say everything in this, everything that you need to do a deal is in this room right now. Sure. Yep. You know, all the pieces are here and it's yep. just a, it's just a matter of forming the right relation relationships and uh, nurturing those and playing the long, being willing to play the long game, right? Like being willing yes. to be relational and not transactional and not just shoving deals in people's faces, but like really getting in their world, getting to know them, asking how you can help them, how you can contribute to them. If you're coming from that sort of space, uh, those, those things are so valuable. So yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Good on you for, for all that stuff. Um, so what, um, what's your, I just got to ask you that. I've actually never asked this question before on the podcast. What's your very favorite part of this business? Is there, is there part of it that just really grabs you and that you just love? Yeah, for me, I, you know, I, I'm all about what's new and exciting to be honest with you. So it, it's, it's looking at deals and, and, um, kind of, I don't, you know, I like underwriting tape, but I'm, I'm not like, um, I don't get quite as deep in the weeds as like the really good underwriter. So I, I don't claim to be like a, you know, an awesome underwriter, but I love when a new deal comes. Um, and I, and I can just kind of dig in like on a just look, all right, where is it at in the city? You know, um, okay. What, what are the units look like? What's been done? What, you know, what would the, would the seller do with it? Why are they selling? Um, all right. What are rents? What, you know, what are other people getting in the area? Yeah. Um, and, and just put, I love numbers. So I do love putting the numbers into like a, I've got kind of a, a we got multiple levels of, of underwriting. I like the high level underwriting that, you know, you can, you can get through it, you know, I don't know, in 45 minutes, uh, yeah. but there's some, you know, it's going to take you hours to fill everything out and, and all the, you know, right. crossing every T and dotting every I, I, I like yeah. doing the high level one, but that's what gets me excited is, is, you know, the next deal. I love it, man. We're, we're, we're really wired in a similar way. Yeah. I, I've, I've jokingly uh, referred to myself as a deal junkie and yeah. it's, it's my there's favorite out there. It, yep. Yeah. It's my favorite part too, man. I, there's something about, I don't know why I like this part of it the most, but like, I love when we get the address of the property and then you can go Google the address and see street view and then yep. oh, run yeah. rent comps and, ch you know, check out rentometer and, and, uh, you know, I, man, I love all that stuff. It's just, it, it's such a blast to unwrap a, a, a potential opportunity and see if it's really a deal or not. And yep. And then oh, once you determine that it is going like doing what it takes to get it. And, and uh, man, I just love that stuff. I don't know yes. why. And oh, you know what I too. love too. And I'm interested in your, in your uh, opinion on this, and this might actually be a good place to kind of wrap things up, but I love doing this podcast, man. Like from the bottom of my heart, like this is the coolest thing I've ever done professionally getting oh, to yeah. hang out with people like you for, an hour and, and, uh, kind of, you know, get our, just open our playbooks up and get our heads together on what works, what doesn't work, what, what was important to us, what made the difference for us and being able to pass that along to an audience that cares. And that is, is, you know, are they're out, they're out there and they're going and getting it, um, you know, to be, to be just a small part of their journey is such an honor. And I didn't know that I was going to like this podcast, to be honest with you, when I started it, like I, I, I thought it'd be a lot of work and I, mm -hmm. I thought I'm, I thought it'd be pretty cool, but I didn't know I'd love it. Like I do. Well, what's, what's your experience with your podcast been like? I I'd say very similar. Um, one thing I'll say about it, Tate is like, um, it's, it's just an incredible networking opportunity because, yeah. um, guys and girls that I really have no business, um, you know, getting their time, like yep. they'll come on my podcast. I know, uh, right? and, and so I've made some incredible connections and I love hearing yeah. people's stories. I learn from people, um, you know, cause there's so many people, whether they're, you know, kind of where I'm at. Um, and, and it's just nice, neat to like learn how they did it and, and maybe how they have a different focus than me. And okay. So I want to think about that. Like, should I be a little bit different? And then, you know, I have a, a ton of people on my podcast, obviously that are, you know, steps beyond me, like you are Tate, where it's like, okay, well um, I'm where you were. Okay. How did you take that next step? And then the next step. And yeah. so I get to learn from that. And then obviously, you know, I'm doing it cause I, you know, I'm learning from it. And then I, I obviously my, my listeners get to learn from it, which is really cool because yeah. um, again, I think everybody should get into this and, and not yeah. that you have to do it 
actively, but at least passively. Um, yep. So yeah, kind of same, same experience as, as, as you really Tate. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Well, dude, this has been awesome, Lee. I really appreciate your time. I just to, um, it, it, you know, if, if listeners want to reach out to you, uh, and learn more about opportunities that you might have for investing passive and passively or otherwise, uh, what's the best, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah. Thanks for that, Tate. I, I'd love for people to reach out if they want to, you know, talk, talk with me or learn more about us. Um, our website threefold rei.com is the best place. You know, we've got uh, a free ebook there called five steps to the pa- five steps to passive income for the full-time dad. Um, it links to my podcast there. You, you can sign up for, our, um, you know, to be part of our community and, and hear about our deals and stuff like that. But um, yeah, T H R E E F O L D. So threefold spelled out and then R E I as in real estate investing.com. Um, I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn and Facebook. Tate. So if you look up Lee Yoder, yeah, you'll find me there as well. Yep. And, and Yoder for the listener is Y O D E R just like it sounds. And Lee is L E E just like it sounds. So easy to find. Well, Lee, this has been a, uh, just, a, a, a wealth of, uh, really just cool stuff to talk about. And, uh, I really enjoyed getting to hear your story, uh, in, in, in depth and, uh, all the takeaways, man, we, we, we really got into some good stuff. And, uh, so listeners go back and listen to this one again, because it's, there's a lot of, we kind of jumped around a little bit here and there, but there's a lot of really good nuggets in this one. So, uh, so Lee, any final thoughts for, for listeners before we, uh, before we cut you loose? Uh, sure. You know, I, Again, I think the hardest part is to get started, uh, especially if you want to get into multifamily, but real estate in general. So um, I, you know, we kind of hit it on a couple of times, but make an investment in yourself. Um, if, if you're not already getting some, some coaching or mentorship or you're, you know, getting just good education, that's going to actually, you know, cause you to take that first step. Um, I would, I would lean into that. Uh, yeah. You know, if you've listened to a podcast and read books, but it's not cause you to take action, then, then maybe you need a little bit more than that. And often that's a, a coach or a mentor or being part of a group where someone's going to give you the confidence and kind of push you to take that first step because um, you can build incredible wealth. You can build a portfolio. Anybody can do it, but you can never do it if you don't get started. And a lot of times you need right. that extra confidence, that extra push that comes from a mentor or a coach. So you mentioned your coaching program. Yep. Um, that'd be a great one, you know, to consider. Uh, and there, there's others out there, but that's what I would encourage people to do because um, you just, you got to get started and it is hard to get started. It's, it's hard to, uh, you know, overcome that, that initial barrier, uh, to yeah. push over that first domino. But, uh, we all know the effect it can have once you, once you do that. So kind of yeah. do whatever it takes to, to get it going, to get yeah. your momentum started. Yep. I love it. Whatever it takes that first deal is tough guys. It's, it's the yeah. law of the first deal and, yep. but you got to do it. You got to do it. And once you do, you'll be really glad you did. It's like yep. the most important deal you'll ever do. So Lee, thanks a ton, man. I really yeah, appreciate thanks, you. Tate. Lots it's of been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Listeners, uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for listening to another episode here, uh, listening to the end of another episode. Really appreciate that. We're doing two of these a week now. And and so we'll uh we'll be uh um uh, we'll, we'll be with you again in another couple of days, three days, four days, uh when the next episode comes out. So uh keep tuning in and and keep learning and and keep uh, going out there and getting her done. Uh, so appreciate you guys and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care everybody. This has been the apartment gurus with Tate Seymour. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform to contact Tate, go to www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. He loves to hear from you and thanks you for being a valued listener. Just a reminder that you are the guru. See you on the next episode of The Apartment Gurus.